Good afternoon, Lia Ryan McHugh. Welcome on VH Berries. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I am extremely grateful. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic because that I see, uh, I sense that you had a very prolific whole um, Halloween evening <laughs> yesterday <laughs> oh, yeah. night yes. from uh, 8 past 10 p.m. to midnight. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I had, I, I did go to bed at like 11 because I had school. So not too late. Never too late. <laughs> and I use this a uh, very precise time because 770 is the phone number area code of Atlanta, the place where uh, the McHugh uh, legacy started. <laughs> and seven hours plus 70 minutes equals 8 past 10 p.m. Oh, <laughs> did not. <laughs> I That's would love to uh, retrace uh, your journey because your storyteller and visionary artist designing your performances in a, in an ocean of emotion, but never too far away from giraffes and sea monkeys. <laughs> oh, those sea monkeys. Um, yeah. Well, I was just a normal kid. I have three brothers and a sister, and um, I grew up in Georgia. Um, I don't know, my parents just raised us like normal kids. Like, my parents weren't artistic, really. Um, my mom homeschooled us until, until like, high school. Um, and my brothers started doing musical theater, and I thought it was really cool, and I wanted to be like them. And so me and my <laughs> sister started doing it too, and we all just loved it. And we didn't, we weren't searching for anything more than that. We were just really loving it, and I guess we were all just naturally good at it. And um, I was doing a performance, and I was playing a mouse, and I guess I cried on stage. I was only seven, and there was a coach in the audience, and he wanted me to audition for this project. And originally, my mom was like, no no way she's doing that. I don't know who you are. This is so weird. Like you want to record my daughter. <laughs> and we had a friend who knew him and um, she convinced us to do it. And it was actually my very first audition ever. It was for Ant-Man's daughter and the original Ant-Man. And I cried so hard when I didn't get it. I was so upset. And I was like, I'm going to get the next one. And so I just kept auditioning. I really wanted to do it. Um, we knew nothing. We were so stupid. We <laughs> we were getting calls from like really um, good big agents. My mom was like, oh, no, we don't need an agent. Like, I don't know what we're just doing this for fun. Like, we don't know who these people are. <laughs> um, eventually, everything just fell like right into place. We were we were doing well. I I mean, we weren't we were, my my siblings were doing it, too. We were booking um, little things here and there. And we were told that if we really wanted to, you know, take off that we got to go to L.A. Um, so we went to LA for pilot season and we were there for a few months and someone knocked on our door in Georgia for no reason at all. Our house was not for sale and they asked to buy our house, which was insane because we had, I, we had been trying to sell our house actually, cause we just wanted to move somewhere else in Georgia in general. And nobody would ever, like nobody would buy our house and it was not for sale. And someone literally knocked on our door and asked to buy our house. If that's not a sign, I don't know what is. And so we were like, Let's do it. Um, and my dad also just happened to get his uh, got um, a job offer um, in that area, so it was perfect. So we moved to LA, and um, I don't know. Things just really <laughs> went from there. We, I mean, in person auditions were a huge thing before COVID, all the time. It was, um, and that eventually led me to where I am today. Um, but when I was little, I was very. Um, artistic, I guess you could say. I would dress up all the time and run around my neighborhood um, with my with my neighbor friend and I would dress up <laughs> as a spy and um, oh my gosh, I used I got uh, baking powder one time and I like dusted it on my neighbor's <laughs> mailbox to look for fingerprints. I was just like silly like that. I would just do weird little things and I always ask my mom, I'm like, why did you let me go out like that? Because I would just put together the most ridiculous outfits and I thought I looked, I was living in my own fantasy world. Um, 
<laughs> I would just make up these things in my head. And I guess that's kind of what made me, um, I guess, be able to do what I do now. Um, I don't know. I didn't watch a lot of TV and I was just very creative. Like I had to kind of entertain myself or, you know, my, me and my sister would entertain each other <laughs> because my mom kind of kept us away from screens, which I'm actually really grateful for because that just gave me a whole different imagination that I don't think I would have. <laughs> but yeah, that's how that's how I got here today. This is how you you are here today, uh, Liam McHugh, and you had to create, as you just mentioned, your own fantasy world. And I know uh, those two animals who are very confident on screen and who wouldn't cry. I just mentioned it just before. I am talking about the giraffes and the sea monkeys, two very powerful uh, beings that are uh, almost everywhere in your work. And I can sense a very powerful contrast between them because one is the tallest living a terrestrial uh, animal uh, on earth and on the other side there is this tiny uh, little uh, animal under the sea that is smaller than a fingertip yeah <laughs> yeah there was there was um there were sea monkeys in the lodge did you know that this is the main reason why i yes. mentioned oh, it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, that's that's a cool analogy. <laughs> I would love to discuss about the lodge, which is yes. one of your favorite projects. Yes, Can you I... tell us a little bit more about it? Because you just told me that it was actually recorded in Canada. Yes, we shot that in Montreal. Um, I was eleven. I had done, I had done a show before that, but that was like my first. Um, kind of like bigger movie it was still a lower budget but we had an incredible cast and really great directors and they shot it in such a weird way that I guess I didn't realize how weird it was because I hadn't really done much before it so it just seemed normal to me um but they shot it and they tried to do it in order of the way the script was written which producers do not like that because locations <laughs> are expensive. And so like the way they order things is kind of based off of budget and things like that. And because it was a lower budget movie, they had a lot of difficulties like trying to shoot it in order. Um, yeah, it was a really crazy experience. We shot it in Montreal, like you just said. Um, it was negative 10 degrees, I think, when we arrived. It was freezing cold. Oh, my gosh. I had never experienced cold like that in my life. <laughs> um and, and like everyone at one point like everyone was getting sick because we were in this lodge shooting the majority of the movie and the entire crew and cast was just in this one house um so like everyone was getting each other sick and it was this whole thing <laughs> um, uh but yeah i just i really love the product of that movie and um horror movies have such a huge fan base too is that which was cool um yeah, that, it was just like, I'm just super, super proud of that project. I loved who I worked with and it was like my first real experience. And um, I don't know, I'll just, I'll never forget it. <laughs> you will never forget it, uh, Leah McHugh. And to come back uh, to the word lodge, I learned that it means a house that is set apart for a residence uh, in a particular season, which makes uh, total sense because uh, you were in a facility surrounded by snow. Yes. Yeah, the, the location of where we shot was an hour outside of Montreal. So we were truly like in the middle of nowhere. We were, I think, 45 minutes away from the nearest Walmart. <laughs> and um, Jaden, my co-star, um, we would like make periodic trips and like get get a bunch of ramen and other stuff because this hotel was a um what's it called it was a golf resort so it was only really like people would really only go there in the summer and so the only people who were staying there were the cast and the crew and the cast was very <laughs> small it was me riley and Jaden the whole time besides i think richard came in for a couple of days um but it was literally just the three of us and my mom and his mom and on the weekends the crew would go back to the city to see their families and we would be staying there all by ourselves and they would shut down the kitchen because 
there was no there's like not enough people to make food so we were we would literally like not have anything to eat unless we like went to walmart and bought ramen and stocked up it was it was really it was really ridiculous but it was super fun and Leah McHugh, this intimacy, for example, by being on the set with two or three uh, people and uh, cast members is really what uh, makes that movie, The Lodge, so special because uh, it adds more loneliness to it and this idea of isolation that is uh, all along that feature film. Yeah, I, we all kind of did feel the feeling of isolation. We were still together, but it, you know, we were all away from our homes. And, you know, I was like, I like kind of, I guess you could consider 11. I don't know if I would consider that a little kid, but like I was littler and I hadn't really been away from my family and I have a big family and like, I love my house and I love being home. So <laughs> being away from that, like just with, um, you know, just really with Jaden was like really weird for me. Um, and you know, all those elements of where we were staying really helped. The directors are very, like, they were very realist, Veronica and Severin. Um, they wanted everything to be super authentic. And so they didn't really want Jaden and I to even really talk to Riley so much. They, they told us never to hang out, like, really when we weren't on set together. We would, they would plan things with me and Jaden and, like, have Riley not be a part of it because we were supposed to have that disconnect with her and not like her um but they so they're really into Jaden and I bonding without her um which I felt so <laughs> bad for her because she really had nobody because you know we, at least me and Jaden had our parents and each other but she was just kind of isolated almost I felt very bad for her <laughs> she had only uh those sea monkeys I know they <sighs> Those sea monkeys were ridiculous. <laughs> they, um, half the time they were these little like plastic things tied to strings. Cause I don't know. I don't like, I don't, can you really, you can't really keep sea monkeys alive in those conditions. It was like so cold. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, Leah McHugh. I indeed became a genius into a giraffe and sea monkey. I did a lot of researches <laughs> and I learned that, um, for example, the At Atenia uh, saliva usually have a time span um, from two to three months. And in general, uh, those pet sea monkey uh, can live up to one year. But in your cases, it was in extreme condition. All true, yeah. uh, you had a very nice temperature inside, I assume. Oh my gosh, the directors wanted to, <laughs> they wanted to turn off the air, like for real, the heat, for real. <laughs> they, <laughs> it was so funny watching them and the producers go like, because the directors were, they're very picky with the way they, the way they shoot and they're very real. And they were like, we want it to be cold in here. We want them to be cold. And the producers were like, guys, we, we cannot do that. We've got a crew in here. That's like child welfare. Like, <laughs> you can't freeze the kids out. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, and they spoke, they're from Austria, and I, I believe they spoke German. Um, and so they would be, which is a very, I guess you could say like passionate language. So it's very like loud when they speak. And they sound very angry. And we'd shoot a scene and they would speak to each other in their language and no, like nobody else spoke it. So everyone's just kind of looking at them while they're yelling at each other. And then they'd be like, all right, we're good. We can move on. <laughs> we're like, Is this good or bad? Are you like, what are you saying? And they, they barely gave us, um, they, I only read the script once before. I, I think maybe twice before we shot that because they, they didn't want the last okay the last movie they did before us they didn't even give the kids that were in the movie the script they would literally just come to set and they would give them the kind of just like the setup of the scene and just let them do what they wanted to do and so they didn't they were almost disappointed that i read the script They're like did you read the script i remember when i was auditioning and, they, and i said yeah and they were like oh like we we didn't want you to read the script and i was like what the heck like <laughs> what kind of director says that we didn't want you to read the script and they wrote it in German I think and they translated it to English so some of the translations were a little off and so they were like say whatever you want say what you would you would say don't so go off the basis of the script but say what you would say 
So honestly, like I never really had sides. They would just kind of put us in a room and say like, this is what's going on, go. So <laughs> so I never really had to memorize anything, which was kind of nice. But there was just like a whole lot of crying going on. So that was, that was a little difficult sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. And Liam McHugh, this sport of improvisation is excellent uh, and it's amplified by all of the uh, very tied um, uh, footage uh, on, for example, the character faces. And I am wondering what were your favorite moments in the entire uh, shooting process because you were uh, indoor, but also a lot uh, outside for outdoor scenes? Um, my favorite moments while shooting. The arrival scene was really fun when we first get to the lodge. And it was actually pretty early on too, because like, like I said, they shot it in pretty much, pretty much everything was shot in order. Um, and oh my gosh, like that entire scene was not scripted. I like walk in and I get cookies and I open the box and um, me and Richard were, eating the cookies like between the takes and they were like <laughs> yelling at us to stop because we literally i just literally he he opened the box and he gave it to me so that was not my fault that was his fault and we were literally eating all these cookies and i was like handing them out and it was really funny um i loved the dog oh my gosh the dog was so cute and so sweet um i was so sad when the dog didn't make it but <laughs> that's i mean that's what happens when you put dogs in every animal that's in a movie dies Every animal. Every animal <laughs> always uh, dies. Liam McHugh and uh, geniuses always recognize other geniuses because we can witness a lot of uh, references to other movies. Uh, for example, uh, at some point you're watching Jack Frost. Oh, yes, yeah. Sorry, it took me a second there. Um, yeah, this is not my movie. I, I didn't even... The, the TV was blank when we were, like, we weren't actually watching a movie. Um, we would have to pretend to watch it because you can't... I, there's something about, like, the audio that you can never have music playing. I I had... Um, there's... Sorry, I'm, like, going... I have to get my words together. Um, like, scenes where you're supposed to be dancing. Like, there was a scene in Eternals where, like, people were dancing, but you can't actually have music. So it was literally so funny watching them shoot it because you're in, like, a bar <laughs> dancing and there's no music. And so everyone's, like, <laughs> but nothing's happening. It's it's really uncomfortable, but it's hilarious to watch. But, yeah, it was just one of those situations where we were pretending to watch a movie, but there was actually nothing on the TV. <laughs> It is always hilarious to watch Liam McHugh. And you just jumped to one of your other very recent projects, which is called Eternal. And I would add another moment in which I assume you didn't have sound, which is the Bruno Morse ringtone, I, I assume. Yeah, nothing, nothing happened. They, I think they, I think someone, I think someone yells. Like there's like a cute, I think I'm pretty sure someone was just like phone or and like someone off screen would yell for a cue and then everyone was like oh there's a phone ringing but there's nothing actually happening <laughs> for the lodge leah ryan McHugh, you were always prepared for this improvisation part because you had uh, before that a lot of experiences at one addresses which is the 11 Whitlock Avenue Northwest in Marietta in which there is uh, the Marietta Square uh, local musical theater mm. yes yeah that was um where I first started was um a musical theater in Marietta Square <laughs> When did you actually make that transition uh, from uh, that part of the United States to Los Angeles? Um, I was I was nine because I remember I had my tenth birthday um, shortly after we moved because <laughs> I was working. Wait, was that? Yeah, that was in LA. I did a movie called Totem, and I turned ten on that movie set. It was my first like set birthday, which was cool. Uh, yeah, and. 
That's a fantastic news, uh, Liam McHugh, because I actually noticed a negative net migration rate on that particular city, but it was only uh, during 2029 and uh, 2020. So it wasn't actually you at that time. <laughs> <laughs> And Liam McHugh, I would love to discuss about Eternals, which is uh, one of your latest release, a superhero Marvel movie. Can oh you tell gosh. us such polar about... opposites? <laughs> it's at the completely uh, yeah. opposite side. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how it got started, this uh, extraordinary adventure? I was just auditioning. Um, I was just getting close on so many different things in LA. I would, it's it's so much work to memorize like a ton of lines. Go to an audition. You have to give it your all. You've got one chance, and then m m almost every single time you you really don't get any feedback, or you get a little bit of feedback, or they just never call you again. Um, but I was getting a lot of callbacks and a lot of screen tests and. I was couldn't book anything and I was so discouraged and I was just working my butt off because I just wanted it so badly and um, I got this audition and it was for a Marvel I, I think all it's, all it really said was like Marvel and they had these sides and it was dummy sides like it, they weren't really from the movie they were just just a dummy script and um, I had I think I had auditioned for the same the studio before so um, I we well, me and my mom went she took me and I remember telling the casting director I think it was an assistant it wasn't yeah I wasn't I wasn't at the seraphim level yet and I was like oh by the way I'm willing to dye my hair and wear contacts because this I think the script said she was Jewish and I had really blonde hair and I have really light eyes and I was like Oh, I'm willing to dye my hair or cut it or wear contacts or anything for this part. And she laughed at me and she was like, those aren't even real sides. You don't even have to worry about it. And I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> um, and, you know, I got I got the call back. I was like, no way. This is so crazy. And I didn't even know who the character was. I didn't know um, how big of a role it would be. I like it could have just been like the daughter of somebody. Like I had no idea it was like really a superhero. And I, I think it was the second callback that I got real sides and oh my gosh, it's also secure. You have to set up like this account and they send it to you and like you can't like screenshot or copy it or like print it. Like it was it was so crazy. And um, <laughs> I think it was a scene. It was a scene that we shot in Eternals, but we didn't. I think it got cut. From, it got cut from the movie. It was a car scene um, with Twinkies. And then there was another scene of me like in a principal's office talking like I was going to school or something it was this big monologue and so I was a lot of memorizing to do um I believe I did a callback and then I had a, this screen test and screen tests are really scary but Marvel screen tests are even scarier because they they took me onto a sound stage which you never you, I mean you film on sound stages I don't think I'd, I'd ever done a screen test on a sound stage and they had like the DP was there um Chloe was there I mean, I think a lot of producers were there. I was freaking out. And they had, um, they had, they hired actors to come in just to read with me. And <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Like, if I, if I don't get this, I don't know what I'm going to do. And um, I remember, I honestly barely remember it because I was, I almost like blocked it from my memory, I think, because I was so stressed out. I don't even know how I kept my cool or how I even did well because I was just freaking out the whole time. Um, but I guess that's like one of my skills is I'm able to like perform under pressure. So that's kind of cool. Um, but after after the fact, I was just in shock. And my mom was like, how did you do? And I was like, I don't even know. Like, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I, I think I did what I was supposed to, but I don't know. Like, I was freaking out. And uh my mom and I had this little like routine where like if it was like a big callback or like a screen test or something, we would, we would go get donuts. And um, so we went and we got donuts and then we went home and I ate them on my couch and I was just like in shock. And I was like, now I have to wait because um, they I had to sign a contract <laughs> for they had a month to tell me whether or not I got the part. So I'm like, great. Now I have to worry for the next 30 days to know if I got this part. And when like to be an actor like, you honestly have to not 
care sometimes, which is weird to say, but you have to just forget about it. After an audition, you throw your sides away and you're like, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. We see what happens. Um, so I tried to do that, which is very difficult on, it was like the, it was something crazy. It was like the 28th day or something. Like the month was almost up and they called us and they said, we want to extend you for another month. And we want to fly you to London and we want you to do a screen test with Richard Madden in this, it, at Pinewood Studio where we're going to film the movie. And I was like, oh my gosh, they want me to go through this stressful situation again. <laughs> so they fly me to London. I didn't even get the part yet. They flew me first class to London. I was like, this is like, if I don't get the part after this, I'm done. I was, I was freaking out. And we were there for, I think we were there for like a whole week. Like it was, it was really cool. Um. And, like, my my mom and I, like, explored London a little bit. It was cool. And I think the night before, they gave, they gave me another scene. And I think I think that's something that they do just to see, like, how it, what you can do with something last minute. So they gave me the scenes the night before, the screen another scene the night before the screen test. And I was like, oh, boy, this is very stressful. Um, I remember we went to the studio. They had someone do my hair and makeup. Like, it was like I was really on set. It was so crazy. I met Richard. Um, and I was like, I, I I mean, I've had a crush on this guy forever. He was the prince in Cinderella. I was freaking out. I was really trying hard to keep my cool. And, um, I remember, which is really funny. He was having a conversation with Chloe about Harry Styles. And I didn't even know Harry was in, obviously I did not know Harry was in the movie at this point. And they were just joking around or something. And she was like talking about how cute Harry is. And Richard was like, oh, I'm cuter than him. And, and it was just, it was like a funny (laughs) conversation like that. And I think about it now and I laugh because they must've been talking about how he was going to be in the movie, but I didn't even know that. Um, and after this, I think when I was working on set, I think Chloe told me, she's like, I knew you were the one from your like first audition like this is all just like a formality that they go through where like every single person on every level has to agree that they want you and they have to like take you through this whole process and I was like oh my gosh you could have told me that you liked me from the beginning because I was like stressing myself out so much um the audition process was so like crazy and vigorous and stressful um but I remember I got the call I my mom my mom woke me up I was sleeping she wakes me up and she's like, your agent manager on the phone and Sarah Finn is on the phone. And when my, whenever I get a call, it's like, your agent manager's on the phone. There's something, there's some news and usually it's good. So I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way. They never call you to tell you you didn't get the part. And I thought I was dreaming and uh, my mom started sobbing. My dad started sobbing. I was crying. Um, I was just like, the smile on my face was so big and my face hurt for like, because I was just, I could stop smiling. I was freaking out. And then they're like, yeah, you can't tell anybody. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like I had to keep it together. I couldn't even tell like my grandparents. I couldn't tell my friends. And I think, I mean, I think, pe- I think I, I told my friends I was auditioning for something Marvel. I think I didn't tell them what it was. Um, but I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't even tell them I got the part. This is crazy. And a couple weeks later we were at <laughs> Comic-Con and they announced my part and there I go, I mean, Hall H in front of, what, 7,000 people? I watch that video sometimes. I think it's just so funny. Like, when I'm walking on stage, I'm like, like, I'm, I'm like, freaking out. It's, it, it's, I watch it sometimes and I laugh. Um, and I just remember that day was, like, so surreal. I did not know what I was getting into. Nobody told me what Comic-Con was. Nobody told me who was going to be there. I thought it was just going to be me, maybe someone, in, like, in the movie with me. We get to this, like, hangar. They take, so they pick us up in a car. We go to the, this hangar. We're taking a private jet to San Francisco. And I was like, what the heck? I'd never been on a private jet before. And we went into this <laughs> private holding room. And um, <laughs> Natalie Portman's in there. Mind is, I'm like, oh. and I, and then um, Tom Hiddleston walked in. And I think I've said this so many times, but like Thor and Loki are like my favorite, but like Thor is my favorite. And Tom Hiddleston walked in and I was like, there's no way he just walked in here. And um, I was like, I think I remember thinking, imagine if Chris Hemsworth walked in. Guess who walks in? Chris Hemsworth. I was, I I can't even explain the emotions (laughs) I was feeling. And my dad was, my dad's like jaw was on the floor and he's staring at this guy. And I'm like, dad, you can't like, you can't be looking at him like that. Like you gotta, you gotta 
cool like calm down you gotta keep your cool um and i know my mom was freaking out too it was, it was just really the craziest thing and then we get on the plane angelina jolie is there and and she's sitting all the way in the back and she's like oh is it okay then i'm like is this is this okay for me to sit here and we're like of course it is and um we went and we i think we sat next to her on the plane and she's the sweetest but i just remember like meeting pretty much everyone in phase four I, I mean, it was, I didn't, and I didn't know that, like, I, nobody told me that they were going to be announcing all these movies, and that I was going to be meeting all these people, I think they did all, do that on purpose, because they think it's, like, cute or funny, I guess, to see the reaction of, like, new people in the MCU, and then after that, um, we got, you know, I think a week's notice, and they're like, Bye, all right, uh, we're scheduling your flights for London, you're going to be there for five months and my mom was like oh my gosh like I've got four other kids um we threw everything together and we, we went to London and um I mean yeah that's how it started it was it everything was just like the like it's really the most insane feelings that I was going through I mean I'm still kind of in shock it's still so weird for me to be like yeah like I was in London for six months I'd met all these people I was in a Marvel movie I had this insane experience and I'm I'm not, I'm going to be 17. Like, I mean, it's, it's really incredible. So lucky. <laughs> so incredibly lucky. Leah Ryan McHugh, you always had this ability to, as you just said, perform under pressure exactly like someone else, which is Sprite, because uh, this character has to be confident in every situation. Yes, I I related so much to Sprite in um, a lot of ways, which is kind of weird thinking she's like an immortal superhero. But I <laughs> I was very mature from a very young age. I mean, I was playing the lead in like musical theater shows when I was seven. Like that's crazy, and so I was able to like do so well under all this pressure. And you know, I I was just very mature from a very young age, but I always looked a lot younger than I was. Like, I mean, when I was, I was 14 in internals and I literally looked like a little kid. Like I was, I looked like I was 10. Um, and I don't know. I always struggled with that, that feeling of like, like being expected <laughs> to be less than I was, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I was, I mean, I worked with adults my whole life. I, I, the only kid I really I ever worked with was Jaden. Um, but so I was just super mature for my age, but I was always treated like a little kid. Um, and that was honestly something that I really struggled with for a long time. And so Sprite really goes through that in the movie of being much older and much smarter, um, but being treated like she's a child because that's what she looks like. And so that's how people perceive her. Um, so it was... I related to her so much with that, and I felt like I brought that aspect of it to the role. You definitely brought that aspect uh, of you into uh, this role and in eternal, Eternals. There is uh, one line that is addressed to you, Sprite, which is the funniest one, uh, personally, of that movie, which is... You know what never saved the world? Your sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Um, I was like, what are we going to take two of, every, two of every animal? That, that Absolutely. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that was, Kum that was Kumail who's had that, right? Kingo? I believe, I'm pretty sure that was him. He was the one always making comments at me. <laughs> He was always making comments on you. And I feel that your sense of humor, as well as uh, the personality that you just mentioned, is pretty close uh, from Sprite to yourself. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty similar. I don't think I'm quite so, I mean, I would say, I don't think I'm quite so moody, Some, but I mean... <laughs> In Eternals there are also a very uh, large and broad uh, selections of background and locations. Uh, most of them are fictional. For example, the Gupta Empire, the mm -hmm. South Dakota. Uh, 
you definitely travel the entire universe during <laughs> yeah. those six plus months of recording. Yeah, um, a lot of most mostly everything was on location, really. Um, we went to this place called Black Sand Beach and it was in the Canary Islands in Fuerteventura, um, which I which was like it's like a tourist island and Fuerteventura means strong winds and the wind there was insane um especially being on a beach we all turned orange that's where we shot australia too like what was set to be australia in the movie we we shot there and it was so windy and everyone was orange for like a month the whole month that we were there was really funny my hair was turning different colors <laughs> and and um angelina has a blonde wig in the movie and um her hair <laughs> turned orange as well and her dress turned orange it was it was really crazy but we shot in the canary islands and in london and we traveled I think we were on location from like where we were set, which was Pinewood. We were on location in London a couple times. We shot in um, Camden, which was crazy because that's like one of the most busiest spots in London. And they shut down like a huge portion of it. And um, just, okay, if, if you're like in Marvel, you know the security is insane because they've got like all these superstars on set and Marvel, I mean, everyone's obsessed with Marvel. Everyone's trying to, you know, if you go to, if you go to premiere, like it's probably the, one of the safest places you could be. So we were in Camden and this is just a funny story. I'm just going to go out and tell you a story. We were in Camden there. We had so much, like we had security everywhere. Like everywhere you look, there's a security guard. And I think everyone had like a personal person to watch them. And, you know, we all have like handlers and like makeup art. I don't Anyway, um, there's so many people. And, we were shooting on the bridge and there was this group of like drunk guys and i think that one of them dared the other one to like run through um and we'd been shooting like almost it, i mean it was i think it was two o'clock in the morning so everyone was really tired we've been shooting for a while and we look over and this guy takes off running past security and he's he's like gone halfway through the bridge and it was and he was, he, I don't think he was really threatening, but like they all, all the security guards freaked out. And it was the funniest thing because he's running across and there's like a mob of people chasing him. And I think, and the, us, <laughs> the actors and like some of the crew, we started like cheering for the guy. We're like, yeah, you can make it across. You got it. And they ended up like, they like tackled him or something. And like, but it was, it was, it was really funny. <laughs> but that was, that was, some, that was a funny story that happened in Camden. But yeah, the locations were crazy. Um, the only time we ever really used a green screen was during reshoots really that's the only time i really remember except in like some of the temples stuff in what i think it was babylon it was babylon we shot something and we had like we had they they build like buildings sometimes or like houses or sets but then they'll have like a green something behind it It was actually blue it was a blue screen it's it's called a green screen but this it was blue <laughs> which is funny <laughs> in definitive, uh, Lia Ryan McHugh, that person who ran into the movie set was thinking that it was the Super Bowl night. He was trying to score something. <laughs> yeah, he had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and Lia Ryan McHugh, what would you say were your biggest lesson on set and also outside because you were part of a, a extraordinary cast of superhero and actors? Uh, how was it to work uh, in this environment and all of those lessons? Oh my gosh. Every, every movie I shoot, I wouldn't say I change, but I like grow as a person and I learn so many things and from I mean I was 13 when I started that and I was traveling the world I was meeting all these like I was meeting people from all over the world who you know not just you know people in my small town it was like people from everywhere and like the things I, I couldn't even like tell you all the things I learned I mean being with those people working with some of like the greatest actors who've like been working for so long and have so much experience I mean, I am like so incredibly lucky to be able to have experienced that. But um, I mean, everyone was really like lovely and welcoming, like which is honestly rare to have everyone get along so well. Um, Selma Hayek was like the sweetest person ever. And she 
I don't know, she was almost like a mother figure to everyone, but, you know, she was just so welcoming, and, um, she would tell, she, she really, like, enjoyed being on set, like, you could tell that she really loves what she does, she gets to know everyone, and, you know, when you're not filming, a lot of times, like, people are on their, actors are on their phones, or, you know, they're doing something else, or they're, you know, (laughs) but she, she would, like, walk around, and, like, talk to everyone, and, like, she just enjoyed being there, but she, she would always tell me, she's, like, this is like the experience that you get like don't be on your phone like don't miss out on it really like receive like everything because you're constantly learning like you know everything that happens behind the scenes and like camera shots let alone like that like talent and work ethic of like everyone is crazy but I definitely learned a lot from Chloe too she was an incredible director and like her take on things was really cool and she just she just like worked so closely with us I'm, I'm, a lot of the times directors are very, like, I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain this, I'm, like, but she just, like, worked really closely with us, and she, like, really wanted us to know our characters, it wasn't just about, like, say it this way or do it like this, she really, like, dug deep and almost brought, like, she cast us just so that we were almost our characters. And so she would really draw from that and just connect it very well. That There was a lot of stuff that we shot that didn't make it into the movie. Um, like so many, like I think we were like a couple weeks, not a couple, like halfway through the movie shoot. And she was, Chloe told me we had three hours of footage already. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the longest movie ever. So they had, <laughs> they had to cut a lot of stuff, which was, which was sad, <laughs> which was sad, but it helped us like really get to know our characters and really get to know each other and connect and i think (laughs) i don't know that was just so cool but anyway um yeah i really learned so much i mean i mean i'm working with angelina jolie she's like directed things and she's been in so many things and she's so talented and incredible and i'm just like witnessing these people was insane i mean i wish i could go back and do it all again i really do (laughs) I hope that you'll do that again, again, and again. And in definitive, that character of Ajak is a mother figure on screen, but also outside of screen. She really is, yes. You just mentioned uh, Leah Ryan McHugh uh, working under the direction of uh, Chloe uh, because um, She also wrote the screenplay, which makes it easier to connect with it. Yes, yeah, she, there was a lot of edits that were made throughout the movie, let me, we'll just say that. She was, I mean, she would make changes sometimes during a scene. She would switch up a line or add something else or, you know, on the day, (laughs) it was, was, I would almost come to set not fully knowing my lines because I knew they weren't going to be the same. Like, I knew they were going to (laughs) change because that's just how, like, it worked. Um, Which which is, like, which is nice. And honestly, as an actor, you have to be able to, like, learn things on the spot and kind of be able to, like, adapt and change and, like, take direction and not be, like, set in stone in one way. So... (laughs) I am also very impressed by the fact that you had a lot of footage because the movie, if I remember correctly, is already two hours and 46 minutes long. So you could make another one from all the footage you had. We could, honestly. They could have like deleted scenes longer (laughs) than the movie. Um, I think it's the second longest, I believe that's correct, that it's the second longest Marvel movie. Like, like I think it's Endgame and then it's Us. (laughs) <laughs> it's very long. In the future, Leah Ryan McHugh, we know that you will always have that box of donuts very near you uh, during <laughs> those recording sessions. But yes. what are now your goals and what you're uh, expecting, for, for example, in future projects? I love creating and like there's nothing in this world that I would want to do more than what I do um you know I've thought about it like you know going to college or like if there's anything else and like I just feel so happy when I'm on set and I get to create and I get to be these different characters I don't know I don't know what it is but it's just just it's just like so fun and I just love it and 
I love really like digging deep and like feeling p- people's emotions <laughs> and like honestly like I like a lot of dramatic acting like I love portraying you know like heartbreak and sadness and like different things and I love making people feel something I think um like bringing people to tears or like really like getting a point across I think is really powerful and I think film can be used in so many good ways um but there's like so many things that I could do so many things that I want to do um I'm working on something really cool right now that I can't really talk much about um but you know I really want to do things that are meaningful and that are good so I'm you know I'm just particular about what I do because I I do it because I I love it and I want to create something really good when I work in conclusion you're going to make meaningful and projects that do good but always with immortal dolls thank you Leah Ryan McHugh <laughs> thank you so much I love talking to you